So as I sat writing today's post all about things that we're doing in May in the garden, I just thought it'd be a lot easier just to show you a quick garden tour of what's happening in our homestead garden in May. First up here in our main veg garden. This sits directly behind the house and this is actually new from last year. Now you can see that we do still have some construction rubbish around because we have spent most of this last year actually building a lot of these beds. So it's been a lot of work. Um, let me just show what's going on. So starting over here on the far side, we have the garlic that we planted late last autumn. Now, this bed is doing a lot better than this bed, which I mulched with straw, the chickens got in, and then dug it all over. So there is top tip if you have chickens, <laughs> the deep mulch method is a little bit of a temptation to for them to rifle through it. Uh, down here, I have these half of these two beds here. This is some fresh manure, and that is where my pumpkins are going to be. What we're going to do is we're going to cover it with some black plastic and plant my pumpkins and squashes through that. The other things we've been working on is putting soil, um, so compost from Dale Foot Compost, on top of all of our um, beds that have the manure in them. And then I have planted a few bits and bobs. So I've got some peas down here. These are um, wrapped up in some um, fleece and whatnot overnight, uh, just to give them a little bit of frost protection. Ah, the cat just walked in too. I've got some cabbages in there. Um, these are just a plastic um, roofing sheet with a wire frame and that protects my cabbages. And then I have a bunch of other uh, brassicas that are under these um, various meshes. And that is partially to protect them from these late, well not late, but these frosts that are coming this year, um, this spring, and also from cabbage whites. Um, I mentioned in the post that I don't plant a ton of onions, but you can see here I've got some onions in between some of my brassicas. So onions make a great companion plant for brassicas because what it does is it helps deter a lot of the pests that brassicas attract, like cabbage whites and other things. So I do always plant some brassicas in with my onions and that is a really good thing. Um, and then also you'll see over here in where the pea bed I just showed you, that's interplanting as well. So I've got my peas interspersed with some brassicas. The peas give nitrogen and the brassicas love that. The rest of my beds my veg beds are still very empty. We haven't even top dressed a lot of them. Um, we're still working on that and we'll do that as we plant. I'm not in any rush. I still have a good two, three weeks actually um, until I don't have the worry of frost. So most things are just left. Um, some of the things that I have put in though are some strawberries. I have moved a bunch of our strawberries to this garden. Again, with some of the same problems with top dressing them with straw, the chickens got in and dug them up. And I also have some asparagus down here. This is a new bed of asparagus and it'll be three years before I can plant that or I can pick that. Yes, I'm talking about you chickens. Um, this other half of the garden we've been working on, I'm just gonna climb over here. We have planted 50 raspberry canes. Um, so down here you can see some of those. They're doing quite well. They're a mix of autumn and summer raspberries. We've also planted some blueberries. These went in over the weekend. And we've got some willow as well. The willow will act as a bit of a break um, from the wind and also hiding from these glamping pots. Oh, we have more willow over here. This is a mix of basket willow and fodder willow um, for the goats and for making things. And then we have a few small fruit trees. These did go in this weekend and they all are um, a little bit later than we would like. 
Most of the action though is still happening in the polytunnel. Um, it's nice and toasty in here. Most of the time, not so much today, it's actually really cold today. But I still have lots of wintered kale um, and some cabbages and then a ton of seedlings. So yeah, some peas that are ready to go in. Um, these are some leeks, lots of more brassicas. We really love brassicas. And then some flowers, just lots of seedlings, um, all in different states of, you know, development. Um, I'll do another round of seeding probably this week for lots of my later kales, or sorry, later my cabbages and things. And then I have all of our sort of more tender veg, tomatoes and peppers. Um, these are tomatoes that I actually bought. I haven't grown them that big. <laughs> uh, mine are all over there. Um, and squashes. And these sit on a hot bed. So this is essentially compost underneath that's rotting down, keeping it warm. And then I cover them every night with the fleece. So my goals for this month are really just keeping everything alive. I mean, we don't stop frosting until the second week of May, um, so most things can't really go in the ground. And even if stuff does go in the ground, you see that I do have some things, and that's because they were getting quite root bound in the pots. Um, they still need lots of protection, and they slow right down in growth. So anything that I plant out, you know, a week ago, or in three weeks, will pretty much grow at about the same rate. I think that Instagram and, and things, people growing in different climates, make us all feel really anxious about, you know, being behind. But really, honestly, you're not behind at this stage. Even if you're somewhere further south, you still have probably a good couple weeks, at least, before your end frost date. And your veg will catch up. Um, you know, as long as you're growing things that are really suited to a home gardener in our climate, you know, not trying to grow anything too exotic, you'll be fine. Um, you'll have plenty of veg. Don't worry. So my other plans for this week um, are to plant my potatoes. So I will come back on with a video showing you all of the different ways we plant potatoes. We do do a few different things depending on what kind of potatoes and what they're going to be used for. Um, um, and so, and then beyond that, I'll see you in a couple weeks when we're actually putting some things in the ground and seeing lots of growth once it starts to warm up again because it is chilly.